Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. A quick question to you all, when was the last time you ever used Ariel as Val in general? Compared to the season's anti barrier weapons being pulse rifles, and weapons such as Outbreak Perfected being the main favourite lately, I haven't seen many people take Ariel as Val out for ages. I would be interested to hear what you guys think about the weapon now in the comments section, as recently it just got buff. Ariel's Val with his incredible damage output and versatility is a powerful addition to any PvE loadout. With the new buff allowing it to trigger ignitions on solar shield breaks or barrier champion shields, this allows the weapon to apply even more damage down the line to the point of reducing most anti-barrier pulse rifles usage by quite a bit. In this video, we're going to dive into the best Ariel's Val prismatic build you can use to dominate PvE right now. To start with the general aim and the Zotok of the build, our aim is to make sure our Prismatic Transcendence form is available at all times. We also need to make sure that our kit has a reliable solar source that will make full use of Dawn Chorus effect. For this, we will be using Dawn Chorus and Ariel's Vow. Starting with Dawn Chorus, with its Zotok effect, Rise of Ember, it states, Your Daybreak projectiles deal more damage and scorch targets on impact. Your Scorch is improved and you gain a small amount of melee energy when your Scorch damages a target. So forget the first line, as this is only applicable for the Daybreak Super, we need to only focus on the second paragraph as Dawn Cause Effect will grant us melee energy per Scorch made. This is effectively strong when paired with Arcane Needles since the following gives you 3 stacks to use and can also unravel targets for additional damage. Also having a weapon with Incandescent will provide additional support for the build to sustain. Our second exotic is Arian's Vow with the exotic effect Looks Can Kill, which states This weapon fires shield piercing ammunition with a scope. A strong against barrier champs, a break in a matching shield or piercing a champion's barrier will cause the target to ignite. Although there are many better options for anti barrier this season, the following still holds up with how powerful its shots can be when you land critical hits or just break shields. The positive of having the following is that it acts like a mini sniper you can use much faster, and the newly added ignition effect means we can proc Dawn Chorus effect fully, but also a solar formation, radiant orbs, and shield cross for even more damage over time. Since it only requires two shots to destroy a barrier champ's shields, the following is definitely worth thinking about having over time. For aspects and fragments, we have the following a feed of void where defeating targets with any ability to kill will activate devour. Helion, where Adam Eater class ability will produce a solar mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. A facet of grace, where defeating targets with kinetic weapon grants you bonus transcendence energy. Using your super will grant you and allies bonus transcendence energy. A facet of dominance, where using your void grenade grants weaken. Using your art grenade grants jolt. A facet of hope, where having an elemental buff will regenerate your class ability faster. A facet of balance where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy, rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy, and a facet of ruin which will increase the shatter damage of your stasis crystals or frozen targets. It will also increase the ignition size of solar ignition blast. As the setup leans into the solar side of things, having a facet of hope, balance, and ruin will provide the biggest benefits for the build. Helion will see a lot of uses when binding to Dawn Chorus so it's very important we make sure Feed the Void is kept active all the time. The rest will increase our element of effect overall. A facet of grace is a good choice to pick as this will allow us to use our abilities more often and debuff within a section of enemies via arcane needles effect. Most importantly, combining this with a machine gun with incandescent like I have done is going to make sure cores become more active and then our mini cooldown becomes more common and then lastly extend our transcendence feature for longer. Combine all of this with Dominance for the weakened effect, and you have a pretty solid build where everything in your kit will see high usage. For the monster stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked as our top priority, with Strength also playing a part. You don't need to worry about having a max stat for Strength, since Dawn Core's effect will help with the cooldown. Having a tier 4 to 6 with selected mods should be enough for the rest of the build to play out fine. Resilience, we have R at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devourer will be enough. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenade. Either Storm or Vortex are both fine to have here, with Storm having the lowest cooldown available. I have chosen Vortex to make full use of the weakened effect, 
which will enhance all of my abilities and weapons damage over time. Its AoE is also impressive, as it will suck units in, making it also easier to net multiple kills at once. And since you don't need a lot to make the following work even more, I would recommend you have the following as additional support overall. Having Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 1 for a 12% MIDI buff, Bolstering Destination for a 12% class ability buff, Outreach for a 12% mini buff and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. Additional mods, we have the following. Connect Siphon for creating all the power via kinetic weapons. Charge Stop times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. A solar weapon surge times 2 for a 17% solar weapon buff, although having a connect surge is also helpful. And lastly, Special Finder, Heavy Finder, Reserves, and scavenger and their mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. As we have covered our exotic secondary weapon, I would then advise you to pick a super weapon of the build. These are all optional, but do hold some benefits toward the build. A primary, I have the Midnight Coop with attrition orbs and kinetic tremors. A unique perk combo that gets slept on, as it's more of a PvP weapon rather than a PvE one. The current perk combo is great for applying additional damage over time, handy against overloads, and the extra orb of light is handy for quickly bolstering super energy. As the weapon will be reintroduced again quite soon, a free to play player is going to either wait or get the Warden's Law from Zavala, which is a heavy burst hand cannon and has more rounds in the base magazine to use instead. Heavy, we have the Unwavering Duty machine gun with offhand strike and incandescent, a fast firing weapon that pairs well with Dawn Chorus and making it a killer ad clearing weapon to use. For free to play players, since this is a trials exclusive and might be hard to get, I would advise you to get the False Idol Sword instead, as that can be gotten from the new DLC and also get incandescent with it. It won't be amazing for end game, except for certain scenarios, but it will make the build feel complete at least. One of the biggest challenges players face in PvE content is taking down tough enemies quickly and efficiently. Whether it's a raid boss or a group of high level yellow bar enemies, you need a build that can pack a punch. Another challenge is survivability, and that area is something that can be easily managed as long as the stats and certain fragments available support the given goal you're after. A strong build can make all the difference in PvE experience, and a strong prismatic build is enough for you to solo whatever content you have in mind. What makes Dawn Chorus and areas around combo so unique is the fact that you have plenty of ways to trigger incandescent at your pleasure, but also being able to apply high critical damage to targets with ease. Applying constant scorch and unraveling is a killer combo in its own if you like to nuke areas clean, or if you like to apply additional DPS over time on a single target. And that Devour plus Facet of Hope combo is going to allow you to utilize the Helion buff for near infinite scorch and melee charge. So why Arian's Vow in this? Well, since it applies high damage on critical spots and also applies Ignition, we can deal a hefty amount of damage, stacking all of this, plus the buffs, onto a singular target will of course be dangerous to them. When you combine all the perks and mods we discussed, you get a build that's capable of dominating PvE content. Whether you're playing solo or with a team, this build can help you take down tough enemies and make progress through the game. And the best part is, it's not just about the numbers, it's about the feeling of power and control you get when playing with a build that's truly optimized correctly. So what are you waiting for? Give the Aerial Val Prismatic Build a try and see the difference it can make in PvE gameplay. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoyed the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while you're here. Dim link for the build is located below in the pinned section and I do advise you to check out my other playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.